Hello, uh, my name is Jeffrey Lewis, and I'm here from New York City, and I play anti-folk music. I don't know what that means, but that's what people say I play. I always thought I just played rock and roll, or singer-songwriter music. But apparently I'm part of the anti-folk scene, whatever that means. Whatever that means, I think it has something to do with like what we've been hearing tonight. However, some people ask, well, where did you come from and how did you start playing anti-folk, even though you didn't even know what it was? <laughs> Perhaps the best answer to that is found in the words of a book that was handed to me at a gig a couple nights ago. A book called More Poetic Gems, selected from the works of William McGonagall. <laughs> I've never heard of this character, but uh, this book was published in the late 60s. And I just had the thought that perhaps I could apply the, the introductory words to myself in a way that explains my own story, the same way that the uh, autobiography here um, is so well written and well put together. <laughs> my dear listeners of this autobiography, which I am the author of, I beg leave to inform you that I was born in Manhattan. I've changed a few words just to apply. <laughs> my parents were born in Brooklyn, and my father was a hippie. And he learned me in the hippie ways while in Manhattan, and I followed it for many years, until it began to fail, owing to uh, lack of hair and other factors. So much so, I couldn't make a living from it. But I may say, Dame Fortune has been very kind to me by endowing me with the genius of anti-folk. I remember how I felt when I received the spirit of anti-folk. It was in the year 1997, and in the month of September, when trees and flowers were, were in partial bloom. Well, it being the holiday week in Manhattan, I was sitting in my back room on West 26th Street, lamenting to myself because I couldn't uh, get to Brooklyn due to a uh, lack of subway fare, <laughs> when all of a sudden my body got inflamed and instantly I was seized with a strong desire to write anti-folk. <laughs> so strong, in fact, that in imagination, I thought I heard a voice crying in my ears, write, write. I wondered what could be the matter with me. I began to walk backwards and forwards in a great fit of excitement, <laughs> saying to myself, I know nothing about anti-folk. <laughs> but still the voice kept ringing in my ears, right, right, until at last, being overcome with a desire to write anti-folk, I found paper, pen, and guitar, and in a state of frenzy sat me down to think what would be my first subject for an anti-folk song. <laughs> 